What's up YouTube, my name is Gemfire and this is my MPC 2000 XL. Today we'll be diving into the world of nostalgic beats and I'm talking about PlayStation Jungle. This subgenre of drum and bass was really popular in the late 90s and early 2000s and it was used as soundtrack for countless video games of that era, especially on the PlayStation 1 as it had city quality sound. Back in the day we used to call it intelligent drum and bass or ambient drum and bass. And you can spot it by its distinctive features, a bit slower than usual drum and bass BPM of around 150-160 beats per minute, coupled with those lush ambient pads and uplifting melodies. Funny thing, I got my hands on PlayStation 1 back in 1996 and I was playing a lot of video games at the time so I think that kind of drum and bass imprinted in my tiny preteen brain. No wonder I found myself hooked up on drum and bass when my teenage years rolled on in the mid 2000s. And you know what else is a gem from the late 90s and early 2000s? The MPC 2000 Excel that I have over here. By the way, the music that is playing in the background right now is the music that I did today so if you want to know how I did it, make sure to stick to the end of the video. To kick things off, we'll be sampling some classic breakbeats. Back in the day, sample CDs were all the rage. Or you could just spend a lot of time digging through crates with all vinyl and stuff. But hey, we live in the future, so I'll be using Splice for all my sampling needs today. Actually, I already have a few breakbeats that I want to use in my library over here. So let's just check this one out. Yeah, that's a really cool breakbeat. Okay, let's just sample it. And I will be using just half of it because I'll be chopping it up anyway. Let's call this one break. Yeah, it's 170 BPM. Let's go into the trim mode and cut out the things that we do not need. Set the play X to play after end. That way it will play the part that is after our selection. All right, now let's set it to looping. Here you go. Yeah, I think that's all right. Let's chop it up. We'll go into zones. Actually, you know what? Um, before we chop it, let's time stretch it a little bit. If you remember my last video when we destroyed a sample, I'll be using the same technique. Edit, time stretch, and we'll go to BPM. Yeah, so the source tempo is 170, and we will time stretch it down to, let's say, 160. Let's chop it up. I'll go into zones, and I will just fine tune I need to fine tune them because otherwise we won't have a clean break. All right, slice sound and margin, I will keep it at zero and let's do it. 160, let's set it to four bars and let's record our drum break. Now let's embark on a quest for a perfect pet sound. Back in the day, it meant digging through crates and vinyl records to find a perfect sample, but now, if you remember correctly, we live in the future and I have Splice. So let's open it up again and see if we can get a pad sound. And I already have a few samples saved in my Splice account. I think this will work perfectly with our breakbeat. So let's sample it. I will call this pad, pad C7 and it's 115 BPM. Let's go into our trim mode and uh, just like we did with our last sample, we're gonna cut the part that we do not need. Play zone after end. Yeah, we can cut it. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna chop it into two parts. So it should be somewhere in the middle. Actually, you know what? We'll go into zones, set the number of zones to two and let's listen to them. So here's the first zone. No, actually, you know what? I'll start with the second. Yeah, you know, it, it, it almost, it's almost right. Yeah, edit, slice, and margin. Let's set it to like 10, create new program, no. That way we will have two chords. Let's go to program, drum one, bed bank B. Let's select our sample. Here's the first chord, and here's the second chord, and I will make sure they cut each other out. So I'll set them to mono. This note mutes this note, and this note mutes this note. Track number two, let's record our pad. Now as we have our tracks foundation, let's take it up a notch. Enter the Micro Freak. This little beast over here will add some extra twist to our nostalgic sounds. I'll record this in a key of C, we'll set the threshold to like minus 45 decibels, so it'll start recording right away. 
All right, so I'll, I'll call this MF, and let's assign it to path number nine. Now let's listen to the stuff all together. Yeah, you know what? I really like it. Let's record this one drone. And what would happen if we pitch our sample all the way down, like, let's say, an octave down, or like seven semitones, maybe? Yeah, that's so cool. You know what? Uh, let's duplicate our pattern. Let's go to edit bars, first bar one, last bar four, and after bar four, we'll insert a copy. That way we have an eight bar loop, and now we can add some variation to this drone. I'll set it to note variation, original key four. Let's set it to eight. And let's record it from the start. All right, so now let's make a baseline and I will be sampling 808s from Splice. Yeah, you know what? That's all right. That's all right. That'll work at the library. So let's record it. Actually, you know what? It's going in too hot. Let's reset the peaks. I'll call this 808C and let's assign it to pad 5 on bank B. Let's go into our program, edit. Let's set it to mono. Now let's turn 16 levels on. Tuning, original key eight. So now let's jam a little bit so we can find a good bass line for the track. Let's record this pattern. Okay, next we need a melody. We need an uplifting melody that will go along with our chords and our bass line. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to find a pluck sound or maybe a bell sound that will go as our melody. I will just sample something from the Micro Freak. Let's find a preset. You know what, this bell sample might work, so let's record it. I'll name it bell, and I will assign it to, let's say, pad 10. Let's set it to 16 levels. This melody is kind of all right. Yeah, let's record it. You know what, we'll just go into step edit mode and we'll fix it there. Okay, yeah, here, here it is. We'll just tune it like to 70. We'll duplicate this pattern. I mean like, we'll duplicate the first part of it. First bar one, last bar five, and after, after bar five, we'll need one copy. Yeah, we have our sample, let's go into our mixer and uh, turn it all the way down here and set it to individual channel. Yeah, let's set it to 5.6. Also, let's send our pad samples to 5.6 as well.
now, no ambient track is completed without the right atmospheric touch. We need those ambient samples that would transfer you to another world. So let's dive into Splice again now in the search for some ambient samples. We're talking about the sounds of rainforest whispers, distant echoes, or whatever else can add that immersive quality to our track. We'll go into genres, live sounds, cinematic. Uh, let's see if we can type here forest rainstorm. Ooh, this is cool. Yeah, let's record this one. We'll call this rain and we will assign it to bank C pad number one. Ooh, this is so cool. Effects are a secret sauce that can transform an ordinary sound into something special, something extraordinary. Back in the day, producers had racks and racks of effects units, tweaking them by hand until they could find a sweet spot. In case you forgot, it's the future, so I'll be harnessing the power of software effects on my iPad over here. And let's fire up the AUM app. Cascade. Yep, here we go. This is a really cool plugin that I really like. It has this absolutely incredible reverb. Let's find a better preset. Yeah, this one. This is so cool. Let's set the output all the way to 100% wet. And let's bring back our drums and our bass. Whoa, this was so awesome. We need to copy this pattern a few times, make some adjustments here and there. And basically we have an entire track over here. All right, guys, that was all for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I see you next time.